In this video, we're going to talk about simplifying radical expressions. Now, before we start simplifying expressions, let's talk about one of the properties that allows us to kind of simplify stuff. All right. You know that the square root of 4 times 9 is the same thing as the square root of 36. And the square root of 36 is 6. You also know that the square root of 4 times the square root of 9 is 2 times 3, which gives you 6. So what we get from that is that the square root of 4 times 9 is equal to the square root of 4 times the square root of 9. This leaves us this identity here, which says that we can split radical expressions and also put them together. On the top here, we have the square root of a times the square root of b. Notice they're both underneath the radical now. We're allowed to do that because of that stuff we talked about up here. Also, the square root of a times b is the square root of a times the square root of b. Notice they got split. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at some simplification. Let's look at the square root of 72. Now, the square root of 72 can be thought of in a couple of different ways. We know that the square root of 72 can be thought of as the square root of 9 times 8, which is the square root of, which is the square root of 9 times the square root of 8, which is 3 square roots of 8. We can also think of the square root of 72 as the square root of, let's say, uh, 4 times 18. That gives us the square root of 4 times the square root of 18, which is 2 square roots of 18. And lastly, we can think about it as 2 times 36 which is going to be the square root of 2 times the square root of 36 which is the square root of 2 times 6 and we can write that with a 6 in front so it doesn't look like it's underneath the radical now all three of these are simplified from what we started with however only this one is in simplest radical form. That's because here you'll notice that 8 has a perfect square factor. 8 is 4 times 2. And we could have brought that 4 out as another 2. Here 18 is 9 times 2. And we could have brought out that 9, that perfect square factor, as a 3, leaving the 2 underneath. Here we took out both the 4 and the 9 because we took out the entire 36. So that's why this one is in simplest radical form, because there are no more perfect square factors underneath the radical. So again, a radical is in, sim in, in simplest radical form when there are no perfect square factors underneath the radical. Let's go ahead and put these into perfect uh, simplest radical form. All right, the square root of 18. The biggest square root perfect square factor of 18 is 9. So we're going to look at this as 9 times 2. That becomes the square root of 9 times the square root of 2, which is 3 square roots of 2. I look at it, no perfect square factor of 2. I'm done. Now let's look over here. Just like 9 is 3 times 3, x squared is x times x. So this is a perfect square factor. So this becomes the square root of 2 times the square root of x squared which is the square root of 2 times x and we always write those in front of the radical so it doesn't look like they're underneath. Now let's look at this one down here. This one's a little different and a little bit more challenging. It may help to look at these if they get kind of big and funky as stretched out with all your factors trying to get your perfect squares. If you notice I broke it up into 4 times 2 to basically identify the perfect square factors. There are two of them, 4 and x squared. So I can bring out that 4 and I can bring out the x squared. That's going to give me 2 on the outside, x on the outside, and what's left underneath is the 2x. 
that's completely simplified. Now last but not least, let's talk about radicals in the denominator. Just like in English, just like in your English class, there are certain punctuation, capitalization, and other kind of rules of the English language that you want to follow. Same thing in math. And one of those rules says is that you can't have a denominator with a radical in it. It's not that it's not a number, it's not that it's not correct, it's just that it's just poor grammar, it just doesn't look right. So one way to get rid of radicals in the denominators is to multiply by a fancy value of 1. Now the square root of 5 divided by the square root of 5 is 1. But I multiplied by this number for a reason. If you multiply across, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5 is 5. And 3 times the square root of 5 is just 3 square roots of 5. Notice what that did for me. That got the radical out of the denominator. Now it's really important to realize that if I take my calculator and I multiply 3 times the square root of 5 and divide it by 5, I'm going to get the exact same thing as what I started with. They're both equal. However, this is just considered simplified, and basically it's just good math manners not to have a radical in your denominator. Similarly, if I were to have something like 2 over 2 minus the square root of 3, now that's a radical in the denominator. And I'm not allowed to have a radical in the denominator. So you may want to th you may think to go ahead and multiply by the square root of 3. And let's take a look and see what happens when I do that. Well, 2 times the square root of 3 is just 2 square roots of 3. On the bottom, I've got two terms, so I'm going to have to distribute to both. 2 times the square root of 3, as we saw, was 2 square root of 3. And then negative square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just negative 3. And if you notice, I really didn't accomplish much because there's still a radical in the denominator. This one changed to a, uh, to a, uh, a non-radical term. But this one became one when I distributed the, na the radical 3. So the way to simplify these is, if we want to take another look at it, is to multiply by what's called the conjugate. The conjugate is basically the same two terms but we're going to change the sign in the middle. So we're going to multiply by 2 plus the square root of 3 which is the conjugate of 2 minus the square root of 3. Don't forget you're always going to need your parentheses because we're dealing with a lot of terms here. So now when we do this we're going to have 2 times 2 is 4 2 times positive radical 3 is plus 2 radical 3. On the bottom, we're going to FOIL. The first times the first is 4. The outer times the outer is positive 2 radical 3. The inner times the inner, if you notice, is 2 times negative radical 3 be negative 2 rad 3. And the last times the last is going to be negative times a positive, giving me a negative. And then the square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is just 3. Now, get back up there. So let's go ahead and simplify this out a little bit. First things first, the positive 2 radical 3 and the negative 2 radical 3, those are opposites. So they just cancel to 0. And 4 minus 3 is just 1. So on the bottom we have just 1. And on the top we have 4 plus 2 square roots of 3. And you don't need to go around writing things with 1's in the denominator, so we can just rewrite it. 4 plus 2 square roots of 3. And that's completely simplified. When we foiled this, because it's the conjugate, the outer and the inner terms canceled out. And that's how we got rid of that, got rid of that radical. Well, that's it for this video.